Who's ready for an engine rebuild? I finally came to my senses and decided I'm not putting the same broken garbage back into my car. The engine's in the back of the Tahoe, and we're heading to my hometown to get a little machine work done. It's time to get this thing running like a top, so let's hit the road. All right, we made it. So, it is Thursday night, and I've got an appointment with the machinist in the morning. The plan is we're gonna have a marathon weekend of tearing the engine apart tonight, machine work tomorrow, and then reassembling the engine this weekend. By the end of this video, we're gonna have a completely refreshed engine that's ready to roast some tires. So let's get to it. The camera died before we got to removing the internals, but now we have a bare engine block. The cylinders in the passenger side look pretty decent, they shouldn't need any work. The driver's side is a different story though, cylinders 3 and 7 have some serious pitting on the walls. So I compression tested the engine before I took it apart, and I did know that cylinder 3 was a little low, however I was not aware that cylinder 7 had any issues, so that was pretty surprising. I'm guessing the reason it was able to make compression was that the problem area is kind of low down in the cylinder, so it was able to make compression up top, but it was probably leaking a lot further down in the cylinder. Here's a look at all the parts we removed. I absolutely love having this table. I might actually need to clean off my workbench at home. All right, so it's the next day, and it is finally the day where I get to take this thing to the machine shop and find out exactly what it's gonna cost to get this thing right. I also might have a little surprise for you guys after we get to the machine shop, so stay tuned. Let's get this thing loaded up. So just finished talking to the machinist, and it's kind of a good news, bad news scenario. The bad news is it needs a little more work than I originally thought. I'll give you a full report once I hear back from him. But the good news is the engine came with forged pistons, so I should be able to sell those and make a few bucks. Unfortunately, this means I can't put it together this weekend, so we're gonna have to pick this up next weekend. All right, it is the next weekend, and I'm ready for round two. I've got all my parts over here back from the machine shop, so this thing is ready to be put back together. My original plan was to have the machine shop really just do the bare minimum to get this thing working properly. I wanted to fix up that crusty cylinder and fix my cylinder head so they stop leaking oil. Unfortunately, these projects tend to snowball on you and it can never be that easy. As the machinist started looking through my parts, it became very clear that almost nothing could be reused. First, there was a little too much clearance between the pistons and the cylinder walls, so the machinist bored all of the cylinders and properly fit this set of 60 thousands over pistons. Then, my cylinder heads were in really rough shape. They needed all new valve guides, all new valves, and even my valve springs were bad. It would have cost so much for me to fix them up that I decided they weren't worth running at all. Which brings me to these bad boys. I got this sick pair of Brodex aluminum cylinder heads. These puppies are going to be a huge improvement over the stock iron heads I was running. They've got 205 intake and 160 exhaust valves, so they will flow a ton more air. They probably weigh half as much, so there'll be some serious weight savings as well. I decided to upgrade my rocker arms as well. They are full roller rockers, and they use a 716 stud, so they should make my valve train much more stable at high RPM. Alright, it's time to put this thing back together. We'll start by dropping the crank into the block. After torquing the crankshaft, we're checking the thrust, which is the forward and backward movement of the crank. We're checking it with the dial indicator to make sure it's within spec. Next, we're checking the piston to valve clearance. We do this by putting some Play-Doh on the piston and setting the head on the block. We will lash the valves and turn the engine over a couple times to make sure both valves open and close. Then we will pull the head off and measure the amount of Play-Doh that is between the piston and the valve. Once we're happy with the piston to valve clearance, we will check the piston ring gap for each cylinder. We do this by inserting each ring into the cylinder, squaring it up with a piston to make sure it's flat, and then checking the gap with a feeler gauge. Once the piston rings are all gapped properly, we can assemble a short block.
We made some good progress so far. I just wanted to show you the pistons quick before I cover them up. Now back to the time lapse. It is back together and ready to be dropped in the car. I can't wait to take this thing to some drifting events and go punish some tires. If you like this kind of tech, please consider subscribing to the channel. Please like the video and let me know what you thought in the comments. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook to get updates between videos. So that's all for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.